The African Union at its eighth ordinary session of heads of state and government summit held in Addis Ababa, the Ethiopian capital, on January 29 and 30, 2007, endorsed the Great Green Wall Project as a Pan-African program to address land degradation and desertification in the Sahel-Sahara region to boost food security and support communities to adapt to climate change. Described as a game changer for the continent, there are about 20 of the 53 African countries in the Sahel Sahara region participating in the Great Green Wall program. These are Algeria, Benin Republic, Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, Chad, Djibouti, Egypt, Eritrea, and Ethiopia. Others are Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Niger Republic, Nigeria, Senegal, Somalia, Sudan, the Gambia, and Tunisia. Though there is a regional program and the Pan-African Agency of the Great Green Wall working with international partners, including the United Nations on the project, each of the 20 participating countries, including Nigeria, is to adopt and champion a unique and peculiar national plan of action and program in their respective territories. This perhaps explains why Nigeria eventually joined in the implementation of the Great Green Wall program in 2013, six years after the initiative was bettered with the pledge to establish a shelter belt of 1,500 kilometers from Kebi State in Northwest to Borno State in the Northeast. Hello and welcome to Nigeria's uh, Development uh, Promotion Program on television, Straight Talk, here on AIT. I am TV Tiab in our Kwaduma Hill Studios at the AIT headquarters in Abuja, the Nigerian capital. It has been four years and counting since Nigeria joined 19 other African countries in the vision of a great green war across the continent. The program, which we can now say has been effectively abandoned by the Nigerian government, was designed from the onset as a community-driven project with seven other broad objectives besides the proposed establishment of the 1,500-kilometer Great Green Wall Corridor. The other objectives include sensitization and awareness campaign on desertification and climate change, promotion of dryland agricultural technology, provision of water for irrigation and domestic uses, development of grazing resources, promotion of alternative and sustainable sources of energy, promotion of alternative means of livelihoods, and creation of enabling environment for the development of agro-based industries. On this edition of our two-part series on the Great Green World Program, we shall take you to communities in some of the 11 states that are supposed to be actively involved in the Great Green Wall project in Nigeria for a first-hand information of the situation on ground. It is indeed the story of another failed national project that is supposed to have been the Nigerian example of a continental program. This is a road our road. The road used to be good. Now, the road is uh, not so good. Come on for road now. Oh, stop, stop, oh, 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 we tried to manage the road like that. Some of us didn't even care. But there are other options.
We can solve our problems by taking action. Our government can work better when we play our part. It's not your job to manage it. It's your job to talk about it. Get involved. Eleven of the 36 states in the country are considered as frontline states where the livelihoods of over 40 million people have been threatened by Nigeria's greatest ecological disaster, desertification. For those who underestimate the disaster of desertification, the rampaging headsmen who have now turned communities in not fewer than 24 of the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, into killing fields, taking over green farmlands from farmers is a very clear and deadly warning of the havoc that awaits perhaps everyone, every community, and every state in the country. As we speak, however, the Sahara Desert is said to be encroaching on croplands in communities across the 11 worst affected states at a distance of about 2,168 square kilometers every year with no functional plan program or action in the country today to arrest the disturbing trend. The 11 unlucky states being ravaged by the evading desert are Adamawa, Bauchi, Borno, Gombe, and Yobe in the northeast geopolitical zone, and then Jigawa, Kanu, Katsina, Kebi, Sokoto, and Zamfara states in the northwest geopolitical zone of the country. Let's explain it this way. Out of the 11 states, seven of the most adversely affected on the fringes of the country's international borders are to have the contiguous green belt under the Great Green War program, while the remaining four states are to have what is called support green belt. It is a sad commentary that out of the proposed 1,500 kilometer shelter belt, just about 167 kilometers may have been established in the three to four years of the takeoff of the program in Nigeria, leaving about 1,333 kilometers of the proposed Great Green Wall Corridor virgin or uncultivated with growing trees. Instructively, the embarrassing and poor level of work so far on the corridor and the support green belt is after a total of 15 billion naira was allocated from the National Ecological Fund from amongst other sources of funding to tackle desertification in the country. And here are the other facts uh, we also have about funding of the Great Green Wall project in the four-year period of 2013 to 2016. The total budget provision for the Federal Ministry of Environment in the said four-year period stands at 71.189 billion naira, out of which only 23.325 billion was for capital votes, with only 303.577 million naira allocated directly to projects and activities that have to do with the Great Green Wall project. Why 2016 has the single highest allocation ever of 105.034 million naira provided in the ministry's 19.4 billion naira budget for combating desertification through reforestation, for climate change, mitigation, and sustainable land management in the shelter belt, which we on this program want to safely assume is for the proposed 1,500 kilometer shelter belt. There is, however, no capital budget allocation for the National Agency for Great Green Wall, which was only established by an act of the National Assembly in 2015. But it is now supposed to spend about 70.5 million naira on overhead recurrent costs alone in 2016. The worst ever budgetary provision for the Great Green Wall project was in 2015, where with 17.499 billion allocation to the Federal Ministry of Environment, only 1.188 million naira 
was provided for three plantations in the 11 frontline states. This clearly explains why almost all activities under the Great Green Wall project in all the 11 frontline states came to a halt in 2015. We hear that the federal government, through the National Agency for Great Green Wall, disbursed various sums of money and equipment to the government of the 11 states in the first two years of the project for implementation of various components of the program. Kebi State, for instance, in northwest Nigeria, has admitted receiving 12 million naira in 2013, and then two tractors and 10.1 million naira in 2014 for procurement and plantation of tree seedlings and payment of casual workers. But no money or other form of support was received by the 11 frontline states in 2015 and 2016. Let's now listen to some of the government officials directly managing the project across the states on what the issues really are. Adequate and timely resolve of these funds for the for the civilian reason is of utmost importance for the success of the plan. We have not even started collecting even the inputs for seedling production, talk less of uh, now planting the seedlings when rains come. So we don't have any single seedling now on ground to start the project. So it, this is a very big challenge. You are supposed to plant these trees as early as, let's say, June or July. But sometimes they used to release the farm in August or September. So sometimes when you plant these uh, trees, they will not give, even have rainfall at least for one month. The problem of uh, land, because sometimes if we go and identify a land, sometimes the communities, they will not accept, they will not uh, want to give the land free of charge. And DGW don't pay compensation. So we, have having, we are having problem with uh, land acquisition. Kano State in Northwest Nigeria is one of the seven states that is to have the contiguous green belt on the boundary of the country with Niger Republic. Six of the 44 local government areas in Kano State are to host the shelter belt. They are Ajingi, Dambata, Gabasawa, Kunchi, Makonda, and Minjimbi. We visited Dambawa and Yao communities in Makoda local government area that are already in the middle of the Sahara Desert with not so much on the ground from the Great Green Wall project, pointing to the fact that a number of the objectives of the program are far from being met. Those three, they are the, our source of income. They are our source of income because we use them to cut down and sell them. Most of the, the people have no occupation to do, but that three is help us to get their uh, social economic. Is that so? So, but uh, again, uh, we have we use it for the firewood. After that, we use that tree for the, our local uh, room. That is, we make use of it to make our local use to correct our farm, our houses. That is the most important one. But we are facing some problems. The most problem we are facing is the cutting down of all, all these trees, but no replacement. No replacement of them. The situation in Kano State where only 22 kilometers of the shelter belt have so far been covered with trees is not any different from what is obtained in neighboring Katsina State, also in northwest Nigeria, where 30 communities across 10 of the 34 local government areas in the state are part of the program. As we speak, only 48 kilometers of the belt in the state has been fenced and planted in the local government areas of Baure, Batsari, Daura, Jibia, Keita, Katsina, Mapondua, Mashi, Samdamu, and Zango. We were, however, only allowed to undertake a guided tour of the field in Gubi Mbauri community of Jibia local government area, 
which is perhaps about the best of what the state can showcase of the Great Green Wall project in the last four years. In 2013, we started shelter bed planting at Groom Bore in Jibe local government. That is, that is the connecting uh, area between Kasana State and Zamfara. And uh, currently, in Kasana State, we are having up to 48 kilometers shelter belt fenced and planted. Specifically in the year 2015, that is last year, we established 30 kilometers. Apart from the shelter belt that was designed to serve as windbreak, we have the community nursery stroke orchard. In this community nursery stroke orchard, which is a three hectares of year, all the beneficent communities are provided uh, with provision for northern, for reason of nursery seedlings, planting of orchard seedlings, and as well, they are provided with water, uh, with potable water. They are provided with uh, solar stroke wind powered boreholes for irrigation of the orchards, the nursery upkeep, urban drinking, as well as uh, domestic uses. The biggest crisis facing the Great Green Wall project in Nigeria is the lack of support for the program by most of the 11 participating states. Under the legal framework of the act establishing the coordinating body, which is the National Agency for the Great Green Wall, the states, especially the seven worst affected, namely Borno, Jigawa, Katsina, Kebi, Sokuto, Yobe, and Zamfara, are expected to donate at least five kilometer wide stretch of land across their respective territories for the planting of the trees along the 1,500 kilometer shelter belt and the supporting green belt. But not many of the 11 states have fulfilled this obligation. The states have also failed in establishing implementation committees for the project at the state, local government, and community levels with most of the states only parading what they call DEX officers for the Great Green Wall project in their respective ministries of environment. The worst crisis is the lack of support funding for the project by the states. For instance, Sokoto State in the Northwest, which has now donated 5,000 hectares of land to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development for the establishment of the controversial grazing reserves for herdsmen, clearly insists that its only obligation to the Great Green Wall Project is the provision of land and staff to work on the program. Consequently, Sokoto State, which is now governed by the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambua, under whose speakership the Act for the National Agency for Great Green Wall was passed in 2015, along with President Muhammad Buhari's home state of Katsina, also now governed by a former House Speaker, Aminu Masari, have led the other states of Bauchi and Jigawa, whose governors are new to the business of governance, not to make any allocation in their state budgets to support the Great Green War program that will be more beneficial to communities in their respective states than the rest of the country. We cannot talk about the Boko Haram ravaged states in the Northeast that are just about to start recovering from the havoc visited on communities there by the terrorists. But we must say that there is hope in a state like Gombe, where the administration of Governor Ibrahim Dankwambo has allocated 1.32 billion, which is about the single highest budgetary provision by any of the 11 frontline states to address environmental challenges aligned with subsisting national programs like the Great Green Wall and the World Bank Assisted National Water Shield and Environment Project. That most of the 11 state governments are not supporting the Great Green Wall pro program does not mean that they are busy providing any other special form of development in the communities now ravaged by desertification. Most of these communities, some of which we have visited, are still without accessible roads, electricity, functional healthcare facilities, schools, or other basic amenities and infrastructure. 
we have about 200 pupils mm. in this locality. Mm. Then we are, we want to advise the government to build and give us a chest for our children and to give us more books and exercise for right mm. to help education to in, the, in this village. Primary school students can't do anything. They can't even write their names. Likewise, you know, secondary school students, they can't even make a good sentence in English. Mm. Even those one in senior secondary school, they can't even pass what I call Nico. Mm. And the problem is from the, even the teachers are not teaching where they do. They don't have a good training on how to teach. Mm. And they don't have a good method of teaching. Mm. The problem is water is not easy mm. for still in the village of this town. It's not easy. We don't have pipe and water in the town. So that is our problem now. Because we are, we are using well, yeah, as a source of water, drinking water. We need another borehole, but they need either windmill or they need the solar one because they are suffering for the gaining of the for getting fuel. So if it is soil, solar, they will not buy the, 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 the fuel. If it is air, wind, windmill, it's more better than to dig the, the one that they are using for fuel. That is their complaint. So much to talk about, isn't it? But the handwriting is on the wall very clearly that the country is losing the opportunity to fight desertification, restore the environment, build communities, and get healthmen who are being blamed for killing hundreds of people across the Federation to settle down in their homelands and contribute to the economy. It's four years and counting, but what is on the ground is not only not commensurate with the investment made so far. The resources so invested are so little on the project that should be an urgent national priority. Let's at this time tell you that Nigeria's Minister for Environment, Amina Mohamed, shall be on this program to address most of the issues raised about the abandoned Great Green Wall project and to tell the world which way the country intends to go with the project from where it is today. Mm -hmm. 